Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be showing you the changes that have occurred in Ubuntu 19.10 which is codenamed Aeon Ermine. If I was to sum up this video very quickly I would say there's been significant performance improvements and there's also a drive to slim down the number of packages that are available in this distribution with a significant removal of 32-bit packages and there's also the start to the deb to snap transition. Under the hood we have Linux kernel 5.3 Mesa 19.1.6 and the NVIDIA 435 drivers, which are now available in the ISO, so users of NVIDIA systems can have the drivers installed straight away. That doesn't mean the drivers are installed for all systems, only for those users with NVIDIA graphics cards. GNOME is now at version 3.34, which does have a few nice features, for example app grouping, you can now drag and drop applications onto each other in the Applications view and create a little grouping. Now that grouping feature has been there before, but you now have the option to customise it to yourself. So for example there, I've just grouped all the LibreOffice components together under one folder. Looking at display settings, you now have immediate access to the night light. The change background view now allows you to change both the lock screen and the desktop at the same time. So you can do set background and lock screen, or you can set each individual component. Canonical are using the Yaru Light theme, and I have to say there's been significant performance improvements in this GNOME desktop. Improved to the point that I couldn't say whether I'm using a full system install or a virtual machine. Boot up is a little bit more pleasing as well now for Intel users, it'll be a Flickr free boot, as well as there being an overall faster boot up time. There was concern during the development of Ubuntu 1910 that, thanks to a significant dropping of the 32-bit packages, that Steam would pull out and refuse to support the distribution. But that decision was overturned by Valve and they have stated they will continue to support Ubuntu. That is thanks to Canonical's decision to support some of the 32-bit packages. This is the list here and you can see things like Adobe Flash, various components of graphics and library files which be for Steam, Steam itself, Wine32bit and ZSNES. As I mentioned the NVIDIA closed source drivers will be included in the ISO file, which adds about 115 meg to the ISO size, but thanks to the intelligence gathered by the metrics data, Ubuntu Mate in particular have managed to offset that increase in size by removing some less used components. For example, by removing some language packs, tweaking some of the applications, and removing all Qt4 components, which are now no longer supported and have actually been removed from the package list. ZFS file system support has been significantly improved, and you now have the option to utilise ZFS during the system install, although they've stated that it is experimental and not to use it on a production system. The Deb to Snap transition has begun, with Chromium now only available as a Snap package, in the long run this will be of benefit to Canonical in that they won't have to build Chromium packages for all their different supported operating systems. On the downside for the user, a lot of desktop based applications which have been packaged in snaps really don't integrate very well in the theming of, well, in the GNOME desktop as well as all the other derivatives. But on the plus side you do get increased security with the sandboxing feature that comes with snaps but I have done a couple of further videos on this subject. And one thing which I'll mention is not here is the GS Connect add-on, which has been promised for some time for GNOME, so that would be able to communicate with Android phones. The application is actually available right now, but Canonical don't believe it's stable enough to be included. Well, that was a look at the new features of Ubuntu 19.10. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.